Today we're going to talk a little bit about landing gear and avionics. So first, landing gear. And this is pulled from notes from Fielding's Fielding's uh, book, Introduction to Aircraft Design. And there'll be some excerpts uh, posted to this uh, from this on the Clue site as well. This is from section 6.5, pages 84 to 88. So, well, in practical sense, the landing gear is the interface between the aircraft and the ground. So here's our airplane. There's some landing gear. So there's three main types of configurations that we'll consider. One is the nose wheel layout, also known as a tricycle layout. And that's what's shown here. This is the most commonly used on modern aircraft. Um, and we're going to contrast this with the next one, which is a tail wheel type. And its advantages and disadvantages are essentially opposite from that. So I'll present the advantages of this type as well as the advantages of the tail wheel type. And the disadvantages for each are the same as the advantages for the other. So the advantages. are fivefold. First, the fuselage and cabin floor is roughly horizontal when the aircraft's on the ground. Second, the pilot's view when taxiing is good. Third, the nose wheel prevents the aircraft from overturning in pitch when braking. So you can imagine, if you've ever seen a car stopping, that the weight, uh, the, the, the mass shifts forward due to the inertial, or the temporary inertial effects move more weight onto the uh, front wheels and you see the front of the car dip down. The same thing happens on an aircraft and especially if you can imagine if there was a propeller on the front here uh, you wouldn't want to accidentally have this come down too far uh, and hit the ground. Fourth thing is that the takeoff attitude so this is the fuselage direction relative uh, to, to the ground uh, sorry relative to the direction of motion so we're moving horizontally, and the fuselage is basically horizontal, has low drag. And finally, the uh, pitch down rotation on landing. So the plane comes in, and the nose is up as it's gliding in, and then the nose comes down for landing. Um, to get this wheel onto the ground, and that helps get rid of the final little, little bits of lift um, that we need to get rid of to make sure the airplane stays on the ground. So Contrast that with the tailwheel layout. Which is sort of more traditional, but is, is seldom used uh, in new designs. Um, so this is where there's main gear.
and then small gear at the back. So the advantages of this there's four that I'll list are that the tail wheel is small and light compared to the nose gear in the tricycle configuration. Also, when braking, as the aircraft wants to pitch nose down, this increases the load on the main wheels, which uh, increases the frictional force and reduces the chance of skidding. Third is that there's no requirement for a tail bumper. Uh, unlike in a tricycle design, we don't need any local fuselage reinforcement at the tail in case it hits the ground, because instead there's a wheel there. Finally, it's often easier to mount the main wheel legs onto desirable structural areas um, with this kind of configuration because those wheels will be further forward uh, on the aircraft. Okay, now the third configuration of landing gear that we'll consider is probably the least commonly used, um, but is very useful in some configurations. This is what we call a bicycle arrangement. So this looks like this. If this is a uh, view from uh, the top of the aircraft, there's the tail, here are the wings, And this is what this looks like. The main wheels are located in the center of the body of the aircraft, one on either side of the CG. And then at the very wingtips, there are what we call outriggers, which are basically smaller wheels that prevent the wingtips from hitting the ground. This has some advantages as well, um, but it comes with some disadvantages too. So one of the big advantages is that the main load carrying wheels, these, are located roughly equidistant above and or in forward of and behind the center of mass of the aircraft. And this means that a large length of the aircraft around the CEG, this whole area in the middle, is free of obstructions. And so this is a really useful configuration for bombers where, uh, and also vertical takeoff aircraft. Because for both of those, either the payload or the engines need to be very close to the CG. So they don't have to compete for space with retracted landing gear using this kind of a configuration. Another advantage is that since the wheels are on the aircraft center line, we can stow them in the fuselage. Which means there's no compromise to the wing structure to require storing uh, the gear. Now, contrast that with some of the disadvantages of this configuration, which are first, that you need these outriggers. Those are the outriggers. 
These are so, like I said, they're small wheels near the wingtips. And these need to be able to caster. That means they need to be able to take on any axis of rotation in the ground plane. And this can result in them being large and heavy. Also, um, it's really important that you carefully control the attitude, so the angular orientation, of the aircraft during landing. Um, in roll and in yaw, if there was excessive rotation, you could overload the outriggers. In pitch, uh, if you have an excessive nose down pitch because of how far the rear wheels are behind the center of gravity of the aircraft, that could be uh, another critical situation as well. And finally, a large elevator effort. is required to uh, raise the nose at takeoff. And that's because of how far back the rear wheel is.